A large portion of the Jewish nation has returned to its homeland, but the heart, soul, and mind of much of the Jewish nation are still in exile mode. This state of affairs must and will inevitably change. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are speaking with the head of Machon Shiloh, Rabbi David Bar Chaim. Shalom, Rabbi Bar Chaim. Shalom. What was meant by Chazal when they spoke of learning Mishnah? The first thing to know in this regard is that Limud Mishnah, the study of the Mishnah, as referred to by Chazal, meant the learning, the hearing of, and the reciting of, and in fact the memorizing of the actual text of the Mishnah. It is important to know and always keep in mind that the Mishnah was not written initially. It was something that was taught by heart. It was given over from teacher to student by heart and it was memorized and that was the intention. The word Mishnah in fact means uh, repetition. In fact it implies constant repetition. The Mishnah is therefore that which is repeated, that which is recited repeatedly until one knows it by heart. That is the meaning of the word Mishnah. There is a connection between the word Mishnah, the Shoresh, the root is Shin, Nun and He, which has to do with Shana, which means re repeat, and the word Shnaim, too, Shin, Nun, the, uh, the, the root or the uh, root letters of the word for two in Hebrew, which means to do it again, two times and then three times to con continually do something, is uh, Lishnoth, to do something more than once, to do it twice, and then to continue doing further. All this is referred to by the term Lishnoth, and from this word we have the word Mishnah. So the meaning of studying and learning Mishnah was the actual recitation of and memorizing of the Mishnah. With before a person could know what the precise halachic conclusion uh, that results from the study of this Mishnah might be, before he could understand a discussion of uh, great scholars on this Mishnah, he would first have to know what the Mishnah states and to know also other Mishnayoth. Uh, in fact, preferably to know the entire body of the Mishnah so that he could understand the discussion fully because usually such discussions entailed references to different sources, to another Mishnah in this Masechet or another Mishnah in a totally different Masechet which in some way is connected and from which comparisons and by way of Masa and Matan, that is to say by way of debate and asking questions and receiving answers to those questions this uh, was the way, the methodology of studying, analyzing the Mishnah and understanding uh, its meaning in full. And this, in fact, is the meaning of the word Talmud. Talmud refers to studying something in depth, uh, in general, and more specifically studying the Mishnah in depth, as it was done in the earlier generations before there was a written Talmud. Talmud was also something that was done initially in Baal Peh, that is to say, not from a written text. It was discussed in the Beit Midrash uh, amongst Chachamim of, of, of different levels uh, who would take a certain text that they all had studied and they would delve into it together. And this was known as Talmud. This was also known as Shimush Talmudai Chachamim. Here in Masechet Berachot, Daf Mem Zayin Amud Beth, we find a discussion as to the meaning of the definition of an Am Ha'ares. What is an Am Ha'ares? According to one of the views quoted in the Talmud, and this is the, uh, the view that is accepted by the Talmud as definitive, Aharim Omurim, other authorities state, Afilu Qara Wushana, even a person who has studied the entire Tanakh and remembers it, knows it well, and has studied the Mishnah, Wushana means has studied the Mishnah and knows the Mishnah, that is to say he can recite it, he remembers what it says. But he did not spend a lot of time with great Tamidah Hachamim, with great scholars who explained to him the inner workings of the Mishnah and the uh, in information that needs to be understood as a background to an underpinning for the Mishnah and also to understand how to uh, extract the Halakha from this or that Mishnah. That is known as Shimush Tamidah Hachamim, that is to say, to learn under and be trained by Tamidah Chachamim. A person who has not done this, says this opinion, Hare ze Am Haaretz. Such a person is considered still to be an Am Haaretz. In other words, a person can know the entire Tanakh, even quoted by heart. A person can even know the entire Mishnah, all Shisha Sadarim, all six orders of the Mishnah. 
and be able to quote it even by heart. And yet, if he has not studied what or not done what is referred to here as Shimush Tamidah Hachamim, he is still considered to be an Amharis. He is not yet a Torah scholar. And Rashi explains here as follows. Rashi writes, Shiloh Shimesh Tamidah Hachamim. What is this person? What do we mean by such a person who has not studied under Tamidah Hachamim? Hu Hatalmud Hatalui Bisfara. This refers to Talmud. And the word Talmud is widely misunderstood today as uh, as if it refers to a, a certain text, that is to say the text that we have before us today called by that name, Talmud. And today when we use the term, that is what we mean. But Rashi explains that that is not the initial, original uh, meaning of the term, and it's very important to understand this. Rashi goes on and says, this refers to the Talmud HaTalui Bisfara, which has to do with Iyun, which has to do with understanding uh, correct and deep insights into the meaning of the Mishnah and the the uh, underpinnings and the uh, essential principles and rules of thumb and assumptions that are the underpinning and the basis for the entire Mishnah and for any particular set of Mishnah halachot in the Mishnah. This is explained to the students by the greater scholars who know the background, who know how to read between the lines and explain the meaning of the Mishnah in full. Rashi says, HaTalmud HaTori Bisfara Shahayu Nothanim LeDivrei HaMishnah Ta'am the Chachamim used to spend time in the Beth Midrash and discuss amongst themselves, and uh, students would sit before them and listen to the discussions and ask questions, and they would give explanations and, and, and reasons for what the Mishnah says. And they would gather together in the Beit Midrash, and they would uh, engage in this study. As we find in the Gemara that we have before us that was put together by the Amoraim. What Rashi therefore says is that the Gemara that we have before us today, the Talmud that we have today, is a written record of such discussions that took place in the, in the different Batei Midrash, in the different schools of Torah in Eretz Yisrael, in Bavel, etc., over many generations. And in the fullness of time, all these discussions and insights and uh, halachic decisions were recorded in written form, and we have that before us today. So we read uh, the Talmud, and by doing so, we understand the, these discussions, and therefore we understand more fully, more correctly, in greater depth, the meaning of the, of the Mishnah, of the Baraitha, of any particular halacha or concept being discussed. And not only, therefore, is it the Talmud that we have before us in written form that is can be correctly understood as being a Talmud, the very discussion of any uh, Torah uh, subject in depth is in fact to be described and understood as part of the Miswa of Talmud Torah, part of the concept of Talmud. And this we have explained for us in, in uh, very explicit terms by the Rambam. Rambam writes in Yichov Talmud Torah, Perek Aleph, Halacha, a person is required to divide his uh, time learning Torah every day into three parts. A third, not necessarily precise third in the uh, sense that it has to be one third of the total time, but a part of that time, uh, a reasonable, serious part of that time that he devotes to the study of Torah is to be devoted to the study of the Tanakh. Shalish ba Torah she ba a third to the study of the Torah she ba which generally means the Mishnah. U Shalish yavin u yaskil a harith davar mireshitho, and the and the rest of the time he should spend a third or one one third part or one section of his time he should uh, set aside for understanding and delving deeply into things to understand them from their source. We will see davar mi davar, and by understanding one thing. He is then able to learn from that another thing, another concept, another, another halakha. We by comparing one to case to another. And this says the Rambam, in Yan Zehuanikrat Talmud, this understanding, this delving into the uh, any halachic or Torah concept in general, and understanding the origins origins and the sources of the concept of the halakha, where it comes from, where it stems from, all the different opinions and reasons and explanations for those opinions are, all this is considered Talmud. Therefore, studying Talmud is not just the study of the Talmud that we have before us, 
with or without the Perush of Rashi, or with or without the Tosafoth. A study of Talmud, in the true sense of the word, is also asking the question, how did the Rambam understand this sugya? And looking at the Rambam, for example, and then comparing it to what we find in the Talmud, and seeing how it fits or how it does not fit, if there seems to be a problem, and then coming up with an explanation. All that is part of the process of Talmud. In other words, Talmud is not just that which is written in the Gemara before us, whether it's Talmud, the Talmud Yerushalmi or the Talmud Bavli. Talmud is the process of delving into and uh, understanding more correctly, more profoundly, uh, any particular area of Torah that a person happens to be studying at a time. One could even say that uh, delving into uh, any particular area of the Tanakh in depth with the, with the different Mepharshim, the different commentators, and all the different uh, things that pertain to it, there's also a, a concept which can be descri described and defined as Talmud. From all of this we understand that when a person studies Mishnah today, seeing that no one today studies Mishnah, uh, simply by reading the text of the Mishnah or reciting it or memorizing it, but one does so uh, certainly at the beginning when one first needs to know what the Mishnah is saying. One f first does so by reading the Mishnah and reading with it a commentary. Some people might uh, uh, use the commentary of uh, Rabbi Obadiah Mi Bartanura, as he's usually called, even though he in fact came from the town of uh, Bertinoro in uh, Italy. And his perush, of course, became uh, the standard perush in Am Yisrael for the last uh, 500 plus years because it is an excellent perush on the Mishnah. What does he do in this, uh, in this uh, perush of his? He gives you the quintessence of what the Talmud says on this Mishnah so that you understand the, the essential reasons and uh, explanations which underlie and underpin the Mishnah so that when you read the Mishnah with his perush, you in fact are not studying just Mishnah, you are studying Mishnah and Talmud, Mishnah and Gemara together. The same is uh, true if one studies the Perush, uh, uh, the Mishnah with the Perush of uh, the Melechet Shalomo, or whether one studies the Mishnah with the Perush of Harav Pinchas Kahatiz itself. All of these Perushim give us um, the essential uh, explanations and uh, definitions provided by the Talmud, by the Gemara, which therefore immediately remove one from a pure study of Mishnah as was understood, as this term was understood in the time of Hazal, and moves one into a realm of studying Mishnah with Gemara. And lest someone think that I am now introducing some new concept, or this is a, my own take on the matter, uh, then you should know that this is not the case. The uh, well-known Perush on the Mishnah, uh, the Tosfoth Yom Tov, written by uh, Rabbeinu Agadol, Rabbeinu Yom Tov, uh, Yom Tov Lipman Heller Halewi, uh, Talmid Muvhak of the Marami Prague, he writes this explicitly in his Hakdama, in the introduction to his Perush on the Mishnah. He writes that today when we learn the Mishnah with the Perush, of Rabbi Ovadiyami Bartanura, uh, or any other, for that matter, as I've said, any other perush which does the same, that is to say, which conveys to us the essential uh, teachings and explanations and interpretations of the uh, Talmud on that Mishnah. When one does so, uh, one is no longer studying just Mishnah, one is studying uh, Mishnah and Talmud, Mishnah and Gemara. And therefore, I encourage uh, all people to spend as the, uh, as the Baraitai Masechet Kiddushin Daf Lamed instructs us, this is the basis for the Rambam that we just quoted. Uh, this is the basis for the Rambam where he said that a person has to divide his study into three parts. The Talmud in Masechet Kiddushin Daf Lamed states that a person must divide his learning into three parts. A third Tanakh, a third Mishnah, and a third Talmud. And all parts of the Torah uh, are fitted in one way or another into those three general categories. Therefore, when a person, uh, as I've heard some people say, uh, when a person says, I don't like studying Gemara, or I find studying Gemara difficult, or I find it boring, or I don't find it relevant. I heard someone recently say, for example, that I go to a Daf Yomishi, or I hear discussions about all kinds of details about uh, how a person is to give a bill of divorce, a get, to his wife, and this really is not interesting and doesn't apply to me because I don't intend to divorce my wife. The answer to such a person is, first of all, you don't need to necessarily study that Masechet before you studied many other Masechet, which are much more relevant and uh, more important for you to be familiar with at this point in your life than Masechet Gitin. But apart from that, a person also needs to know 
that studying Gemara, uh, whether it's Bikiyuth or Bi'iyun, whether studying it quickly or in depth, is not for everybody, certainly not to the extent that it should be the main uh, material of Torah, the, the main source of Torah that a person studies on a daily basis. If a person studies Mishnah with a perush, or more than one perush, which explain the essence and the interpretation, as we find in the Gemara, of that Mishnah, then a person is studying Mishnah and Talmud, because Talmud can be uh, learned and can be uh, dealt with on many different levels. Studying the Mishnah, therefore, with the Perush of Rav Kahati is one level of study of Talmud, with Mishnah. And studying the, the Mishnah uh, with the Gemara, without Rashi, is another level of Talmud. And studying it with Rashi is another further deeper level of Talmud. And studying it with the Chidushim of the Rashba is another level. And every person has his own particular level and style and uh, way of studying Mishnah and Talmud. But no one can say that I don't need to study Mishnah or Talmud. So therefore, I encourage all people to study Mishnah regularly on a daily basis as the Halakha requires us, as it appears in the Baraita and Kiddushin Daf Lamed, as it appears in the Rambam, Yechot Talmud Torah Perek Aleph, as it appears in the Shohan Aruch and the Tur, in Yerade Asiman Resh Mem. Wow, this is Halakha Pesuka, and it applies to all Jews. And there is no Jew today, almost no Jew today, who can claim that I am unable to do so because today we have all the books and all the commentaries and, and translations etc. so that almost every Jew who wishes to do so is able to study Mishnah uh, and Talmud on at least on some level uh, based on the level and the abilities and the time available to each and every one of us. Thank you Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.